Well, hello everyone and welcome to 17 Minutes of Science. This is our now 11th show. And I wanna thank everybody for continuing to turn out and inspiring us to have these conversations and seek out more and more interesting people to talk to about their science and other work that they're doing. My name is Sarah Cheeseman. I'm a technical solutions scientist at InVivo Biosystems. And today I'm really looking forward to my conversation with Brianna Brunel, a futurist, entrepreneur, and data scientist, which is a super cool string of words. So we're gonna hear from more about that from her in a moment. Brianna is the founder and CEO of Pure Strategy, which is a company based in Saskatoon, Canada, where Brianna and her team use artificial intelligence and machine learning to support and improve the business analytics of companies by generating a better return on investment on their data collection programs and improving customer experiences and to work to developing better products. And they do a lot of work in the healthcare sector, and we're going to talk about that today. So the title of our discussion is how artificial intelligence and machine learning can help us understand this decision making in the healthcare industry and why that's important. And so I'd like Brianna to take a moment to tell us about herself and then we'll jump into some questions. Wonderful. Well, I'm so excited to be here. I, you know, I'm honored to, to be on the show and, you know, a show called 17 Minutes in Science. I just could not resist, you know, something <laughs> cool. It has that. a nice alliterative quality to it. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that we all need more science in our lives. And so, you know, happy to be here. Um, you know, as you said, I, I'm a data scientist turned entrepreneur. And so I've been um, sort of a, a data geek my, my whole life. And so I'm so excited that now people are starting to actually be excited about what data can do. And so, you know, I love talking about some of the, the cool things that, that companies can do, especially in the health, healthcare space, because, you know, I think that this is a topic that's really on everybody's mind right now. That is for sure. I'd like you to take a second though and talk about your degree because you, when we talked about this before, <laughs> you said you were into math when no Yes, I was, I was, I was super into math. I was actually into uh, math and physics. I love Stephen Hawking and I really wanted to get into uh, theoretical physics. And um, uh, what was interesting is, you know, it was the, really the math courses that, that drew me in. But of course, nobody was interested in math when I took it. I think I was the only person who graduated with a degree in math in my year, and nobody could understand, including my parents, why I wanted to take such a, you know, bizarre thing for my career. Well, now you're proving them all why. <laughs> yes, yes, I lucked out with that, I guess. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. So speaking of the healthcare sector, that's what we're focused on today. So can you tell us a bit about why it's important to understand the physician and patient decision-making process? Absolutely. And so, you know, when I started my company, I knew that one of the areas that was going to be particular, particularly important um, to really understand decision-making was in the healthcare area. So I'd worked with um, several pharmaceutical companies um, and you know, providers to, to be able to understand you know, why people were making the decisions that um, they were. And of course, you know, healthcare is such a, a huge area that um, to be able to understand um, the things about patients that are you know, difficult to capture with data was so crucial to health outcomes. So you know, why is a patient um, deciding to seek care or not to seek care? Um, what is the sort of, you know, emotional state behind um, some of the decisions that they make about um, their own self-treatment activities, um, who they talk to, um, who they trust to talk about their healthcare, um, all of these different things. And then on the physician side, you know, you have uh, physicians seeing patients and um, trying to do the, the best that they can to give them treatments to you know, improve their quality of life. Well, how does that decision happen? And, you know, how are they adopting new treatments, new therapeutics um, to be able to improve their patient experience? And so, you know, it's such an interesting and complex area that I knew that the tech tools that started coming out were super applicable to that area. Hmm. And so then cut, cut to the present day when we're in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, and so how is that affecting, um, affecting the field and the trends yeah. that you're seeing from the lens that you view this through? Yeah, you know, that's such a great question because um, what I was worried about is that 
uh, physicians and healthcare providers would sort of you know, pull in and, and they wouldn't be as um, willing to sort of share their insights because, you know, they're busy, they have other priorities, they, you know, it's very challenging to be on the front lines right now. Um, but we actually find the opposite that, um, you know, people in the healthcare area are even more willing to collaborate, to provide um, information and, and sort of narrative around their experience. And so I'm, I'm really hopeful that um, that sort of collaborative attitude and that attitude of, you know, we, we want to learn from each other. We want to learn from the experiences of patients in different countries, different, um, different areas, how we can, you know, do a better job of treatment with COVID-19 um, and how we can sort of get that information to, um, you know, everyone else um, so that they can uh, maintain their health at home. Mm, so critical right now. And so then, are you, are you currently working with physicians to innovate in care at this moment? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, so um, one of the things that we're working on um, is sort of looking at uh, physician decision making um, sort of on a global scale. And so, um, you know, every country has sort of their own specific different system. Um, and layered on top of that is this really complex cultural component around, you know, why certain people do seek care, uh, why people don't seek care, um, you know, just all of the, the sort of culturally based decisions on uh, this, the decisions that people make. And so um, I'm finding it really interesting right now because um, once you layer that cultural component um, onto this pandemic, like a lot of you know really fascinating kinds of things um, pop out uh, of the data. So I can't talk too much in too much detail um, about it, but uh, definitely uh, we're seeing something unpre unprecedented right now. Yes, we are all living through the experiment and analyzing it yeah. at the same time, right? For so sure. And I mean, like the, the global co cooperation um, has actually also been really interesting. So you're seeing countries um, sort of come together to to try and you know share insights and I think that that's a really really positive sign. Totally agree especially when it seems like other aspects of our our interactions internationally not so much but to know that people on yeah. the ground who are actually dealing with with real people who are suffering are are able to come together. Absolutely. What about risk? Can you talk about how what you do helps uh, physicians work with their patients in reducing risk in their yeah. care? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what I mean? Every time you have a physician that's creating a treatment plan, especially in complex cases, um, there's always trade-offs between um, you know, quality of life benefits and, and drawbacks with side effects, for example, um, different complications, different sort of uh, very personal factors in uh, whether the individual, for example, can maintain that treatment plan, you know, there, there's a lot of things sort of around it. Um, and so being able to understand, um, you know, what patients, for example, might be at risk of, um, you know, not maintaining their treatment plan, which ones are at risk of readmission, which ones, um, you know, might, you know, have other sort of quality of life related risks. Um, it's, it's really important to be able to um, understand how these decisions are being made because if you can understand them, um, you can hopefully impact um, some of these outcomes. So you can create intervention programs, for example. Um, you can know when um, you, you may need to recontact a patient or you may need to talk to them um, you know, in sort of a different way about their treatment plan. So you know, I think that uh, readmission is always so expensive, especially you know, if you look in like emergency care. Um, you know, so anything that we can do to sort of, you know, reduce that or eliminate that, I think is just a huge thing. Mm, and that would be a win on both sides. Absolutely. For everybody. I'd like to talk about the data for a minute, because for those yes. that are, are not <laughs> in your world, um, that can feel kind of mysterious. And I know that yeah. you can't um, speak too specifically about it, but sort of in broad terms, I have two questions that have come up for me. So the first okay. one, so in terms of, of, um, data science intersecting with healthcare, 
do you feel that that push came from from your side or from their side or how did that come together with the community adopting this sort of approach and were they um, quick to do that or did that take some convincing yeah so i mean it's always a challenge because um, within the healthcare area especially for healthcare providers um, you know there there is a real focus on outcome metrics right um, you know, you want to have better outcomes for the patients. You, you know, you want to make sure that um, you're doing everything that you can to um, improve the, the patient's quality of life, you know, um, during and after treatment, during maintenance. Um, and so um, what's interesting, though, is that I think that there's a sort of a new focus on um, understanding that narrative around the patient's full experience within the healthcare system. So um, a lot of times there's sort of a, um, it's a bit of a sort of a piecemeal approach where, you know, you, you're looking at specific metrics um, on, you know, say how many people visit their physician or, you know, how and how long does each uh, visit take, like those kinds of things. But you're not necessarily linking that um, across time for a single individual. And um, because, you know, everybody's so much more online now, people are um, starting to actually have fuller conversations about their entire experience um, in, uh, in the healthcare system for, their, for a certain condition. So um, you have this whole rich story of how um, these conditions have impacted their lives um, as well as how the therapies have improved it. And so, um, whereas before, I think that there was a lot of interest in looking at um, sort of individual metrics. Now it's, a, it's all about looking at that sort of uh, broader story around that individual person. Can you, in generality, speak to how you're capturing the data? I, I imagine this is also fraught because of confidentiality. So any way you yes, can sort of of help understand yeah. how you do that would be a benefit. Definitely. Um, so we have a, a, a large network of partners that uh, help us collect data from uh, physicians, from people in um, healthcare professions like nursing, radiology, um, that kind of area, um, as well as a, a network of patients who have um, agreed to share their experiences in the hopes to, you know, make the the uh, make the journey for other people better. So this includes uh, patients for common conditions, um, as well as patients with uh, rare diseases, um, as well as their um, circle of healthcare providers. So especially when you have um, a long-term chronic condition, um, you have you know understanding that ecosystem around that individual patient is so important. So you know they have friends and family members that are often you know just crucial to um, their care. Um, you also have sort of a uh, healthcare professionals that are kind of um, you know on the periphery of of that person's experience. And so um, I think that being able to um, impact the outcomes for other people that are going through the same thing. There's such a, a feeling of, you know, like collaboration um, between these individuals. Um, of course, privacy is always extremely important. And so everything we do is, is you know, um, anonymized and, and with uh, privacy in mind to make sure that there's no, um, you know, negative repercussions for, for the individual who's, you know, being forthcoming about sharing their experience. Mm, that's reassuring. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> Do you, um, what's, what pieces of information uh, or data sets that you, have you found to be the most critical for physicians to, to help them make decisions? Oh, you know, so one of the areas that, you know, we really focus on is being able to find uh, what are called typologies. Um, and so what these are, are groups of individuals that have similar attitudes, behaviors, and values. Um, and who make decisions in um, a similar way. And so um, the reason that it's so powerful is because it really allows you to understand them as an individual person and understand what's important to them. And so you know all of a sudden how to um, talk to, that, to them in a way that makes the most impact. And so um, that I always find so fascinating because 
a lot of the decisions that we make, especially around healthcare, um, has a huge emotional component. You know, there's um, fear, frustration, anger, denial. Like there's there's a lot of sort of emotional drivers to decision making, um, and being able to understand from that person's perspective is just so so powerful to to find better outcomes. And so that that having that perspective for the physician, I think is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, to help them do their job better and helping the patient do better. Exactly. Okay. That's great. I mean, I think about how much physicians have to, um, how much knowledge they're taking on in the course oh, yeah. of learning their, their craft. Um, but the whole emotional aspect of it is just its, its own world. And that is mm -hmm. important. And Absolutely. it's a difficult thing to master, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I mean, there's so many things that are kind of, um, we're, we're even just now learning about um, sort of what the subjective experience is, because, you know, you, you have sort of the science behind medicine, evidence-based decisions, and, you know, and all of those things. Um, but, you know, humans are not always rational. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, we can't, we can't treat people like bots. And so um, everybody has their own unique story that really contributes to, to their own outcomes. That's very humanizing. <laughs> <laughs> In our last minute, I would love to hear you talk about you um, being driven to be an entrepreneur and founding your business to just pivot away from, from this specific topic and talk more broadly about you building, building what you're Absolutely. working on. Absolutely. Well, you know, I always, um, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always knew that that was going to be uh, my journey. It was only sort of a, a question of you know, when exactly I was going to make the leap and what exactly um, I was going to do. Um, so when I was a kid, I didn't really know very many um, businesses that you could run. So I had all of these ideas, like I wanted to have a clothing store and I wanted to run a restaurant and I want, you know, because those were the businesses that I came in contact with. Um, but when I was working in data science, um, you know, far after I wanted to, to start my fashion store, um, I realized that, you know, technology was such a, a fascinating, um, fascinating field because everything changes really quickly. Um, and the impact that you can have um, with a technology like what we're building is just massive. Like it's just, you can really have a positive impact in, in people's lives. And so that's what kind of sucked me into the, the tech area, the idea that um, you know, it's something that you create that you can scale and impact, you know, thousands, millions of people. That is for sure. And I forgot to tell you I'd set the timer. So that one's yes, time's off. up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off in the middle. Yeah, of cut, cut me off right now. <laughs> but I was, I was just thinking that maybe at some point your, your tech and, um, and fashion interests may intersect again. Who knows? I hope so. I, you know, it, it's, it's always important to have, you know, many different interests. Like I'm always surprised at how many things actually end up intersecting. Um, so mm -hmm. you never know. There's a lot of opportunity for fashion-based uh, fashion tech too. Well, you're truly a futurist <laughs> and we will stay tuned for that. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking 17 minutes, Brianna, to join us today and tell, to talk to us about um, an area that probably people just don't have as much of an understanding of and yet it clearly is growing of importance. So yeah, thank you so perfect. much. You're very welcome. It was just wonderful to be here. Well, and um, always nice to have people to talk to from um, across the border to the north. So thank you for taking time. <laughs> and also to everybody who tuned in today and keep coming back. We love having you. Drop us a line on Facebook, know you are here. And in the meantime, till we see you next time, be well, be safe and take care. <laughs>